In this video, we're diving deep into two underused CGM bet modules, Rating M and Goals. We've touched on these before, but now they're getting the spotlight they deserve. Plus, I'll be reflecting on my first year as a YouTuber. Where has the time gone? If you would like to purchase CGM bet, you can now do so from our own link. This will get you 25% off the current price. Just go to the link on the screen and also in the description of this video to make your purchase and join many other users of this excellent betting and trading tool. Rating M can be accessed from the more buttons on the top bar of CGM Bet, but most of you will probably get into it by left clicking on the fixture rather than right clicking, which is what I tend to do normally. This module is a gold mine of information for profiling games. We'll go step by step through a couple of historical examples. While rating games should be used with other core modules, it is incredibly useful for confirming the strength of your selections. Essentially, it analyzes goal data for all teams to generate probabilities and odds for different outcomes. The exact calculations are a secret, but let's see it in action. So we're going to look at the Aston Villa versus Southampton game, uh, which was played uh, last weekend. And this should have been an easy home win for Villa based on their strong home form and Southampton having 100% losses away from home this season. So we can see from the green boxes what the actual score was in the game. 1-0 uh, to Villa, which I'm sure was lower than most people would have expected. Um, the data defaults to looking at the past five seasons, but we can change that to any number of seasons or just look at the current season if we wish to. But we're going to leave it on five for this example. So we can see that Villa scoring one goal was 39.1%. And for Southampton, zero goals was 52.3. So the most probable scores for each team actually did happen. And we can see the, the next likely scores would have been 34.7% for two goals for Villa and 30.4% for Southampton scoring the one goal. So looking at the right-hand panel, we can check if the odds at the book is are value or not when compared with the rating game outcomes. Villa are offered at 1.39 when the calculated odds were 1.516. So this means that there was no value in backing Villa. There would have been more value in laying them. And we're not saying that you should lay them, just that the value would have been um, in that action. On the flip side, the draw would have been value at 5.43 when the calculated odds were 4.6. And Southampton, even though the odds for the bookies were around 7.5, then the actual calculated odds were closer to eight. So again, that was uh, there was no value there. So looking at the goal line, under one and a half, which actually was, we were getting a lot of value there. The calculated odds were only three and a half, whereas the bookies were giving 6.2. If you'd have been on that, then you would have um, made a nice little profit. And we can see all of the unders, you, there was value there. There's all the overs. Um, there was no value in backing or the value was in, in laying. Uh, we can see on the correct scores, then 1-0 actually was the most likely score according to the data in CGM bets with 2-0 then being the second most likely score followed by 1-1 and 2-1 some way behind. So we can see that the data that CGM bet was given us uh, actually would have helped us to profile this game quite closely. And we can analyse this data at any point in the match. So we switch to half time and we can see Villa scoring uh, 1 was 47.8% and Southampton scoring 0 was 74.8%. And the actual half time score in this game was 1 0. So it kind of paints that picture. I mean, 47.8%, it's almost a 50 50 chance on that. But uh, it was more clear that uh, the likelihood was Southampton wouldn't score in the first half, which indeed they didn't. So we can also model games with our own scenarios. What if late team news shows Villa were playing the kids because they had a key Champions League game in midweek? We have dozen scenarios which we can use to tweak the ratings. Uh, we can use the sliders to change these preset conditions. So if we take the Villa attack down and we'll take their defence down as well, then we can see that the numbers are now changing to reflect um, these actions that we're making. And now we've kind of weakened Villa's team. And we can see that the 0-0 scoreline is now um, highly highly attractive, um, slightly better than a 1-0 to Villa. The model now is not expecting many goals because we've weakened Villa. Uh, we haven't changed Southampton at all, it's worth saying at this stage. 
But just by weakening Villa, we've significantly reduced the amount of goals that the software is now expecting. As well as using the sliders, you can create your own scenarios, each with different weighting factors. This can be applied depending on what you need to model, and we can just slide these up or down at 5% intervals, which will then have a similar effect as uh, manually adjusting these. Finally, you can manually alter the percentages to model what-if style scenarios. So if we make Villa a goal machine and we, we're not at one down to say 30, and that gives us another 14, 13.8% uh, to play with up here. So if we make 6, 4, 7, 4, 9, 4, and we'll make the 8, 1.8 to bring it up to 100. And now doing that, we can see that any other score greater than uh, 4 is now 13.8% because we've... It, indicated here that Villa uh, scored six goals on four in four percent of the game seven in four and nine in four so the software is now altered accordingly and we can see the home team to win is 50 percent and we can see the overs markets as well have now uh, coming significantly in terms of the odds um, because of Villa's superior uh, firepower the next game we'll look at is Napoli versus Lazio Napoli were top of the league before this game. The final result was 1-0 to Lazio. And what we'll do is we'll check this out over the previous two seasons rather than five this time. So we're comparing data, which is now more in keeping with recent times. Uh, we can see this is potentially going to be a tight affair with Napoli um, getting 28% on zero, 32 on one and 21 on two. With Lazio getting 38.7 on 0, 29.3 on 1, and 24 on 2. And the offered odds for the home team in the draw offered no value, whereas the away team odds uh, were one point above what the calculated odds were. So the value was on the away team in this game. And we can also see that back in the under 1.5 goals in this game offered slight value of 0 0.1 points. So... Again, that would have been a, a nice little trade and also the under 3.5 was value, whereas everything else uh, wasn't. And we can see that the most favourable score lines were 0-0 or 1-0 to uh, Napoli. So the 0-1 to Lazio was 8.23%, uh, which was the, um, was the most favourable score should Lazio win, but it was only the uh, fifth most popular score out of um, all of the scores that were available. So what we've shown here is um, evaluating games where the home teams was the favourite in both cases, uh, and in Villa's case, the strong favourite. Um, but what it's demonstrated is that um, the favourites don't always have their own way, and we can analyse different um, scenarios as t in terms of goals and um, final outcomes and the overs and unders markets. So... As I said at the start, this is a good tool for profiling games and it maybe gives you a little bit more sense than typically you would have by following your emotions. The next thing we'll look at is the goals module. And as before, you can get to this from the top menu of CGM Bet. Or the way I like to do it is to right click on a particular match and go to the goals analyzer as this will actually bring the two teams through for you. And you can view all the data here, either as a percentage, which I prefer, or, or as odds. But the odds don't really make as much sense to me as the percent. We'll flip back to that for this example. So as you can see, uh, for tonight's game, Sheffield United uh, have got nearly a 40% chance of winning with the home team in the draw, um, around 30% each. And we can also see at five-minute intervals what the likelihood of each of these things uh, occurring is. So we can see after 15 minutes, there's a 14.47% chance of Millwall leading. Uh, this is why I prefer the percentages, because if we flip to odds, then we can see there's a 6.91 uh, odds of them leading at that time. Um, it's To me, it's just easier to read as a, as a percentage, but that's up to you to decide how you want to display the data. So we can see there's 318 games that are similar to this one, which the data has been modelled from. And we can view what the games are, should you wish to, in in, um, in that list. So this module is great if you're looking for times where the goals may well be scored. Uh, so we can quickly see what percentage of chance there were for a goal by five-minute interval initially. But we can change that uh, 
we can go to 45 if we like. So we so we can see that for the over one and a half goals market, there's a 31.15 chance of there being over one and a half goals in the first half and 68.49% by full time, um, which basically mirrors the full and half time figures there. But we can change that, say 30 minutes, we can see what the breakdown is there as well. So very flexible, and uh, you can tailor this to um, whatever periods of the games that you're uh, particularly interested in. We can highlight percentages too. If you wanted to get on the over 0.5 goal market, when the probability was over 60%, or um, the odds of 1.67, then we can highlight this too. And now we can see we've got highlighted here where the percentage is between 60 and 100. So in the 0.5 goal example, by the 45th minute, the percentage of this happening would be 62.11. Uh, the actual in-play odds may well be lower than this at the time, but uh, that's when statistically uh, the, the likelihood of over 0 0.5 goes above the threshold that we've set. And we can also view other markets as well. So we've got the both teams to score, both teams not to score and the margin of victory, uh, double chance for home and draw, home and away, away and draw, and the um, the correct score markets as well. So there's plenty here for you to get your teeth into. We can also model in-game situations. So what we can do is we can see if the score is still 0-0 at 10 minutes, how that affects the odds and the percentages. So we can see that the 60% Goals has now moved back to uh, 50 minutes, whereas it was 45 previously at the start of the game. And we can see if Millwall were to take the lead uh, by 15 minutes, then we can see that over 0.5 goals is shown 100% now from 15 minutes onwards because we know that's factual because there has been a goal. And we can see the over 1.5%, there's now an 86.84% of this hitting during the game. Uh, with 55.26% chance of it hitting by half time. And at the bottom, as with the AGS module, then we can bring in live games that are actually being played now. At the time of recording, none of these have actually started. But um, say we brought in the Atlanta game, which is going to be played at uh, 1.30 this afternoon, then these figures would update based on the current score and the current time of the game to give you a pure in-match uh, prediction of uh, where this game might en end up going all powerful stuff i'm sure you'll agree do you guys use rating game or the goals analyzer what do you think of it leave your comments below this video marks the end of my first year creating youtube content to be honest i never expected to make more than a few videos let alone have people actually enjoy them over the past year i've covered a wide range of topics from exploring different aspects of cgm bet and its competitors to exposing shady sales tactics, to diving deep into data analysis with Excel, Power BI, and even AI integration with trading software. You guys have been incredible with your likes, subscriptions, and comments. Even the constructive criticism has been valuable. I knew some videos would spark debate, particularly the Sports Trading Life video, which surprisingly has the lowest approval rating at 91%. Interestingly, that channel hasn't uploaded since then, so I'll take that as a win. Ultimately, my goal has always been to create valuable content for you, and I believe I've achieved that, even with the recent dip in views. Honestly, I'm not concerned. My focus isn't on ego or view counts. If fewer people are watching, it might mean more traders are becoming self-sufficient with the software, a huge improvement from where things were a year ago. However, there has been a downside. The childish and toxic behaviour I've witnessed online has been disheartening. It makes me question the environment we're in. We're adults, yet some act like playground bullies. This negativity has made me question my involvement in this field. But then I remember the positive impacts I'm having and the value I provide. That's what motivates me to keep creating the best content possible. Speaking of toxicity, I need to address Ryan from BTC's recent comments. While I'm not their biggest fan, any personal abuse directed at him is unacceptable. No one deserves that, regardless of their content. Criticising content is one thing, but personal attacks are never okay. I genuinely wish them all the best with their new venture. We need more trading content on YouTube, no matter how wacky, and I'm glad they're continuing. I see their change in direction as a positive move, especially since they've been heavily inspired by my approach for a while now. 
However, I do question the need for a new YouTube channel. Is it simply to double dip on monetization? Speaking of which, I believe in transparency. Here are my YouTube stats for the past year. So as you can see, uh, the income is minimal, um, 90 pounds and 16 P. And that was from the uh, middle of August when I got monetized. So we're looking at about 20 pounds a month. So clearly I'm not doing this for the money. Although reaching monetization in eight months is an achievement I'm extremely proud of. Finally, I have a couple of thank yous. Firstly to Mihai, who has constantly gone above and beyond for his customers. His tireless work and the software modifications over the past year have been game changing. Secondly, I'd like to thank the guys who ran the CGM Bet software giveaway. Without their kind gesture, none of this would have happened. CGM Bet wouldn't have the exposure it does and many traders would be unaware of its potential. This software deserves recognition and I'm glad I could play a part in that. Thank you all again for an incredible year. Here's to the next 12 months. Let's keep learning, growing and supporting each other and also be nice to each other. Thank you.